So apparently lately I'm into like these list style videos talking about things I buy versus no longer buy. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, minimalists talk too much about stuff. And I'm like, yeah, totally. But I think these videos can be useful because it's a perfect example of where people spend money on things that they actually see value in and enjoy versus what they don't. It's all about putting your money in intentional places. So these are 10 more things I still spend money on as a minimalist. The first thing I still spend money on is my hair. If my video on 10 more things I no longer buy is out by this point, then you'll know that I don't spend money on things like dyeing my hair, highlights, ombres, balayage. I don't really go out of my way to buy a lot of the extras like hair masks, Dyson hair dryers, hair accessories, things like that. But what I do still spend money on are things like haircuts, which I get pretty much two or three times a year. My hair is kind of frizzy, a little bit dry and very fine. So I do still spend money on things like hydrating, shampoos and conditioners, leave-in conditioner, and the occasional hairspray if I need it. Shocking. Takeout is something that I have decided to accept as an expense in our budget. We order takeout anywhere from a couple of times a month to about once a week. When it comes to your mindful spending, your intentional living and your sort of money management journey, I think if you actually focus on embracing your true expenses, embracing things that you enjoy that are important to you, then I think it's totally appropriate to budget that into your monthly expenses. If your whole grocery budget is takeout, do you. But if it's not derailing your financial plan, and I think that is a very important question to ask yourself, then I think it's totally okay to budget for that every once in a while. Or every day if it's in your budget. I mean, it's your money. The next thing I still spend money on is therapy. You guys, it's always good to talk to somebody. And therapy is something that I think is a true legitimate investment in your self-care and in yourself. So I attend therapy anywhere from one or two times a month. Sometimes I have some on and off periods within there, but something that's helped me sort of in the interim of that, because therapy can be a financial barrier for a lot of us. There are definitely affordable options out there, but something that I use to sort of supplement the therapy that I have been going to is the app Aura. So I've talked about Aura before here on my channel, but if you haven't heard of them before, Aura is basically an all-in-one wellness and sleep app. And I actually use Aura every single day. So when I'm not going to active sessions of therapy, I've really been enjoying listening to little tidbits of wellness on the Aura app every day. They're anywhere from like three to 10 minutes long. You can choose to go longer if you want to. When you sign up, you can just answer a couple of questions of things that maybe you struggle with or that you're interested in like sleep, meditation, affirmations, mindfulness, and Aura will come up with a list of personalized tracks and recommendations that are 100% tailored to you. It has thousands of meditations, stories, and so much more like CBT, life coaching, and spirituality. Aura's content is created by hundreds of expert coaches and therapists from around the world. It's pretty much like an all-in-one kind of Spotify for wellness and sleep. So if you're interested in giving Aura a try yourself, the first 500 people to click the link down below will get 25% off and let me know how you like it. So for me, therapy has definitely been worth the investment because I think self-care really just does start with some inner work and things like talking to somebody else or just having a little bit of guidance, however you can access it, is a really helpful way to get started on that journey. The next thing I still buy and budget for is coffee. Now, for the majority of the time, we do make our coffee at home, but we still budget for buying things like beans from our local coffee shop and about two or three times a month on a weekend, we will go out and get ourselves a specialty coffee, Americano, whatever. So I budget about $50 a month for coffee, and that includes fancy schmancy local small batch roaster beans, all of those words, and our little takeout coffee. For me, the occasional takeout coffee on the weekend is just like something that Jeff and I enjoy doing together. We go for a walk, we sit in the park, we drink it. So it's like a whole enjoyable little event. It's a treat, it's a date, and I think we were able to sort of come to a compromise of of enjoying a takeout coffee every once in a while versus enjoying most of it at home made by ourselves. 
<laughs> I do this much more mindfully now. And I did buy clothes throughout a lot of my debt repayment journey because it's something that one, I think was kind of hard for me to shake, but otherwise I enjoy clothes. I think there is a way to mindfully shop for clothing within a framework of values that you resonate with, whether that be shopping primarily secondhand, doing things like clothing swaps, focusing on purchasing natural fibers. There's plenty of ways that you can buy clothing if you enjoy clothing and fashion in ways that resonate with whatever's important to you. And more importantly, in ways that still respect the budget that you've written for yourself. So clothes and fashion, I still do spend some money on it, but this is something I do very mindfully. And it's something that I think about long and hard before I do spend any of that money. So this is an infrequent thing that I spend money on, but it is still something I spend money on nonetheless. The next thing I still spend money on is education. I think it's important to never stop learning and also to invest time and sometimes even money in things that you're interested in. For me, that's kind of twofold. It sort of goes in a pharmacy direction where I go to continuing education sessions, attend talks to learn about new medications, new changes in practice, things like that. And on the creative sort of business YouTube side, I've taken a few courses as well. I think there is definitely a lot of value from learning on the job, learning from your mistakes, but it's also really good to learn from experts and others too. So that's definitely something I'm willing to spend money on. So thanks to you guys, my YouTube channel has kind of become a side hustle, part of a business and is a passion for me that I would love to take more on a full-time basis. That's one of my dreams. And you guys have really helped that dream come to fruition, come to reality. Um, and so I have invested some of the money back into the channel, into things like computer upgrades and some software. For me, time, like all of us, is one of our biggest assets. So anywhere where I can sort of maximize my time and efficiencies, I have put a little bit of money in there. So that's things like equipment, software, anything I can do to sort of speed up the workflow process for me and make it more efficient, that's money well spent. The eighth thing I've spent money on is YNAB. This is a budgeting software tool that I started using in the past couple of months, and it is a paid subscription service. So I like the idea of sort of automating my finances wherever I possibly can. And with the subscription service budget, I'm able to do that. And also I find it has a much better sort of goals and savings tracking system than the manual version of my current budgeting app. I'm totally okay with that little bit of money spent to sort of streamline my budgeting and my savings goals as I continue to move into this next chapter of my financial journey, which is saving that three to six month emergency fund, starting to invest and saving up for a down payment for a house. So however I can automate this, I'm willing to pay a little bit upfront for that service. The ninth thing that I have spent money on are fitness apps. So this year I have really impressed myself and built the habit of working out at home. For the most part now, I do a lot of like YouTube workouts. So I do a lot of Lily Sabri, Heather Robertson, um, now Sydney Cummings, and I also do a little bit of Brett Contreras' stuff. And because I enjoyed these workouts so much, in particular Brett Contreras and Lily Sabri, um, I paid for a subscription to some of their fitness services. And for me, kind of leveling up to the premium services from what you can get for free on YouTube, I've actually gotten a lot of value out of it and I've really been enjoying it. And the final thing I still spend money on is SPF. Sunscreen is the most important part of any skincare routine, and I am not really nervous about spending money on the sunscreens that I enjoy. Sun sunscreen can be very expensive, which I think is a little bit unfair seeing as how it's touted to be the most important step in any skincare routine, how everybody should be wearing sunscreens. So I do think accessibility for some of them, some of the more fancy, nice ones can be a problem, but just know that there are some great drugstore sunscreens out there, um, but it, most of it really boils down to personal preference in terms of what you enjoy and what you know that you'll reapply. So there can be some price range discrepancies on that, but some of them can be really affordable while others 
are a little bit more of a splurge. So that's it for the 10 things I still buy as a minimalist. And the way I've been able to decide that I still wanna spend money on these things is that I know these things still bring some enjoyment or value in my everyday life. They serve a purpose, they help make life easier in some way, or they're just for pure enjoyment. And I don't feel guilty about spending that money. And if you have things like that in your life, then neither should you. Thanks again to Aura for sponsoring this video. And again, if you were interested in giving the app a try, you can get 25% off if you click the link down in the description. Let me know some things that you still spend money on, guilt-free. Thanks so much for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Bye.